with your eyes. I would really want to know what God has done in your life. And I always am really interested in when people share with me their stories of when the Lord touched their heart first. And what did that look like? What did that sound like? Because there might be people here, this is your first time, I know there are, because I met you, uh, that this is your first time to retreat. Or, or maybe this whole thing about God is like, well, I don't know, I don't know. I have a caregiver who, who uh, uh, was raised in a very, 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 very strong atheist home. And so to cross that line to believing in a Jesus was really, 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 really hard for her <laughs> to make that jump. And so I really love to hear when people were touched first by Jesus. So I, I thought I would share with you a little bit of um, the times when Jesus touched me early, early on. When I was 15 years old, I was a sophomore in high school, same age as my son right now, actually. And I was going to an all-girls Catholic school. It was a boarding school. My mom, even though my parents, <laughs> whenever I say that it was a boarding school, I'd go down on Monday mornings, and I'd come back on Friday. And I need for you to know absolutely that my parents did love me. Okay? <laughs> I need to say that publicly because my mother always kind of go, why did you work about that? <laughs> Well, you have to know that my mom came here from France, the Basque country, when she was 23 years old. And if you know anything about Europe, and especially France, that the kids go to word school and so all the time. And so for her, it was just when she came here to the States, met my husband, my husband, met my dad, and got married and had kids, it was very natural for her. Uh, to find a boarding school for us to go to. She did not know one word. Well, no, actually, she knew please and thank you and tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, she came here. <laughs> and so she really got to know the language and all of that here in those first couple of years of living here. So it was very natural for her to find a boarding school for us kids. Plus, my father was a sun-kissed grower, an orange grower, when Orange County was orange, okay? <laughs> when it was, before it became all this foo-foo junk that I can't stand, because it was really true in the farming community growing up. And I was raised, as I said, in the middle of an orange grove, and so I really truly am a farmer's daughter, definitely so. Well, anyway, so, back to this high school. I loved this school. It was really kind of a, uh, it was a college prep school, but it was also kind of an artsy school. Uh, you could take voice lessons, piano lessons at school. You could take uh, ballet in place of PE. And I remember, yeah, and I remember, as if it really helps me now, but anyway. <laughs> but I, I remember having my voice teacher, and uh, that's where I started to sing. I remember being a freshman in the high school, and my first voice teacher was Sister Mary Catherine Sherman. <laughs> and she would always say, Now remember, Renee, as you're singing, you need to be dropping your jaw and relax your jaw as you sing. <laughs> by her chin. How did it do that? Jiggle, jiggle thing. Well, now that I'm in my 50s, I know exactly. Mary Catherine Sherman, I know she's up in heaven now. And I'm sure she's looking down saying, how revenge is sweet. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, anyway, but what was also very, very special about the school is that there was a chapel on site, right on campus. And I remember one day after school, it was during finals week, and uh, walking down the hallway to go back to my dorm. 
And as I was walking down the big hallway, I walked by the chapel. And I thought, oh, you know what? I'm going to pop in there for a moment. And um, I popped in. Nobody was in there. It was quiet. It was like, as I said, a really sweet place with stained glass windows. And I, and I walked in there, slid into a pew, dumped my backpack, leaned back to get some prayer time. And as I leaned back, my eyes fell on the crucifix. Fell on Jesus hanging on the cross. And I remember staring at that, thinking, why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that for me? I've been told that you did that for me and all of us, but I'm kind of a jerk. Why would, I'm just a simple kid. Why would you do that for me? And I remember really meditating on that for a while, really staring for a good long time, thinking about what Jesus had done for me to get to heaven. It was so out of my sphere of thinking, especially in my young, immature, sophomore way. But when I look back, I am sure that was one of the first times that the Lord cast the line and the Holy Spirit was dark then. Pull me on in. So I sat there praying for a while, saying, Lord, I don't really understand it at all. I don't really get it. But I guess I trust it. Thank you. And then I picked up my backpack and went on my way. Then a few years later, and of course, in between times, there was always prayer time and things like that. But I remember that being really a time that just really hit me hard. What Jesus had done. Then about four years later, I was 19 years old. I graduated from high school. And I was back home and going to church at my home church, and at that time it was the Mission San Juan Capistrano, and yes, where the swallows come back to Capistrano. <laughs> and uh, um, I remember being at Mass one day and thinking, where is everybody? Where's everybody my age? So I went to my pastor and I said, where is all the teenagers? Where are the teenagers? And being a wise man, he said, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> Now, I had a really sweet relationship with this man. I did. And I'd known him all my life. And so I felt comfortable enough to say, well, you know, the music probably could be bumped up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you think so? And I said, yeah, I think so. And he said, well, I know you start to play guitar. Why don't you come and, and start singing and help lead some worship? And I said, me? Really? And he said, yeah, I think it's a great idea. So I did, and that's indeed really what started my road down of music ministry and being in music for the Lord. Well, one particular day, about a year later, while I was now the music director <coughs> at the church, and at the same time I was going to college, college to get my degree in music education to be, as I said a couple days ago, high school choir director. Well, now it was Good Friday. I always think it's amazing that it's called Good Friday. Mm -hmm. But the day that we remember that Jesus was crucified and died on the cross for you and for me. And I was young. I was only 20 years old now, and here I had the responsibility of learning, uh, leading hundreds of people in music. This service, we decided, in order to keep our whole focus on the last seven words of, of Christ, <clears throat> of Suman, the musicians, we all stayed behind the congregation, way back in the back, so that there would be no focus on us in any way but focus 
on the crucifix. And uh, we were singing an old hymn that we had sung many times. And I'm on the microphone in the back. And the hymn was, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Make of me what pleases you. Here I am, here I am, Lord. So this was kind of a response hymn that we were singing at the end of this service. But this is how it came out this particular day on the microphone. Here I am, Lord, I come to do Started, he did. It was a yank that day in a really, really big way. 